Well, Coach, obviously, uh, you know, pretty big news last week with the signing of Michael Porter Jr. and Blake Harris. Um, but uh, Michael Porter Jr. specifically, I mean, do you feel any pressure, um, at, you know, getting the number one player in the country and knowing that a lot's going to be expected of, of this team, this player, and, and you as his coach? Not at all. I don't feel any pressure at all. My job is to make sure our program is successful, to make sure uh, – Mike fits in with the guys, helping the guys understand. He's obviously a very talented player, but to make him at ease, to define roles at some point, it'll probably happen late in, late in the summertime, more into the fall. But I'm excited about it. I think it's a tremendous opportunity to have a guy of his caliber, uh, and more importantly, his character. You know, I had a conversation with, with one of your assistants, Michael Porter Sr., who's obviously yeah. his father as well, um, you know, about how you, you know, I think – there's some people who just assume, hey, number one prospect in the country, he's going to be a prima donna. He's going to come in and he's going to, he's got all this hype, but he's going to think that he's better than other people and, and expect special treatment, stuff like that. First of all, do you think that's a fair assessment of who this particular player is? And, and how do you make sure that that kind of doesn't infect the team at all? I don't think so. Just being around him, he, I think he has a tremendous level of humility for a young guy's age. He's done a, done a great job of really trying to, bring guys into our program. He's, he's a tremendous salesman as far as our program is concerned. Yeah. He wants to be a part of this. He, he wants to see Mizzou be successful. I think he has a luxury of having his dad on the staff. So tough times, bad days, hard times, good times. He has a guy he can lean on to really get a grasp of what's really going on behind the scenes. Because one thing about, I think, with young guys, when you, when you enter a college and you, you become a part of a program, there's always a trust factor because those are, there's a staff that didn't raise you. Now, he has here's a Here's a guy, his dad actually is a part of his life. So now having that, I think is great for him. The expectations, I think, uh, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen expectations for a team that won 27 games over three years go so high. I mean, I, I think there's some odds makers have you guys like 15th in the country in terms of, you know, odds to like win a national title next year and things like that. Um, you know, I mean, how do you manage those expectations? And what's realistic you know, if you have, obviously you haven't finished out the roster even yet, but what do you think is realistic for this group? I mean, uh, are you even thinking about 20 wins in a tournament, or do you just focus on kind of the process well, still? Well, I think it's, it's, you're still trying to finish out a recruiting class. I think that's the most important thing yeah. when it comes to recruiting. I think the other side is making sure our guys finish strong in the classroom going into the summertime. Then you, you have we have to get to the summertime with a full roster before we talk about – you know, those sorts of things. But we never really reveal our team goals, you know, publicly. Those are things we talk about within our team. And we also lean on our older guys, our veteran guys, to kind of set those goals for our teams and those expectations. But you want to be realistic when, you, when you're when setting them. But, but I think we're off to a great start. Are you looking with these last two scholarships, best available player, or do you have some position, specific positions in mind? Because obviously just looking at the roster, it seems like uh, post-play is maybe an area of need for you guys. We've we've honed in on you know guys that we're looking after, uh, and we we feel good about you know finishing strong with with these two scholarships. But of course, we like to think they're good basketball players. But but more importantly, do they fit into what we're trying to do? I think that's just as valuable. As always, you can always find a good basketball talent, but but can they fit to what we're trying to do? Do they want to be successful? Do they understand the work they have to put in? I think all those things things combined help us make a decision. Yeah.